Hey guys, Metal Jesus here. And today we're gonna to take a look at a bunch of Nintendo Switch accessories. I've accumulated a bunch of them over the last couple months, and we're gonna put them all into this one video. We're gonna cover a lot of ground, including third-party docks. We're gonna show a third-party display stand, and I've got a bunch of third-party controllers, both wireless and also connected, including those really interesting hoary ones that have a real D-pad for your Nintendo Switch. This is gonna be awesome. Let's take a look. We're gonna start off with the one I was most excited to check out and that is the Genki Covert Dock. So as you can see, this is a power dock, but what's interesting about it is that it kind of does a little of everything in a very small package. This was kickstarted and got a lot of press because it attempted to do something that I think a lot of Switch owners were clamoring for, and that is a smaller version of the official Nintendo dock uh, that basically has video out, it'll power your Switch, plus it's got a plug in there for a normal USB so you can charge things like the Pro Controller. But again, do it in a small and safe package. And that's exactly what this is. For $75, you get something that is actually a little bit smaller than the normal Nintendo brick. The power, power brick that plugs into the wall, this is actually a little bit smaller than that. And then what you do is plug in the USB-C cable that is included with it into your Nintendo Switch and then the HDMI cable into your television and voila, it just works. Now I know what you're thinking and I'm thinking it too. And that is that there are some third-party docks out there that have a reputation for bricking your Switch. And that's not good obviously, cause the Switch ain't cheap. And so the people who made this sat down to try to figure out exactly what it is about those third-party docks that are bricking switches. Well, it turns out, if I understand this correctly, is that Nintendo's implementation of USB-C on the dock with the Switch is not exactly compliant with how other devices normally use that. And then you add in the fact that some of those docks just don't have great components and well, you've got a recipe for disaster. And again, that's what this device attempted to try to avoid. So uh, you can read about what they did to make this. Um, they also have you know articles talking about what exactly bricks switches when they use docks. Uh, my experience so far has been very positive and it seems like most people who have used these have been as well. Myself, I'm just really happy to finally have a truly portable all-in-one solution for when I travel. So uh, this is something that I'm gonna be using a lot. Now let's take a look at another dock I got from Hyperkin. This is the Retron S64. And as you can see, it is modeled to look like the Jungle Green Nintendo 64. And I have to say, when I first saw this, I fell in love with it. It's absolutely brilliant. Um, it's such a cool throwback to the N64. And what this does is what you would expect. So it is a dock as well as a charger. Notice on the top there, there's this big button and that button is to allow you to switch to e either portable mode or outputting to your HD television, which I thought was a pretty cool little feature. However, a word of warning, if you look at the Amazon reviews for this particular dock, there are people who claim that this has bricked their switch. So that really sucks. Now in this scenario, I am testing and using Nintendo's official Switch power cable. And I suspect that would be okay, but I don't know if I would take the chance. I've also read that some of the people who have had their Nintendo Switch brick on them with these third party docks, it has happened while the Switch has been getting a firmware or system update. So I guess you could potentially use this 99% of the time, but then when there is a system update, you would want to plug it into, you know, the actual Nintendo dock. But again, I don't know how true that is. That's just some of the things that you read on the internet, but you know, buyer beware. Next up is an accessory that I typically do take with me when I travel, and that is the Evo Retro Nintendo stand. And basically this is just a $10 plastic stand that is designed to hold up your Switch and play it in portable mode. 
And it's very simple. There's no HDMI, there's no power cables or anything like that. Basically, you can just choose three different angles in which to display your Switch when it's sitting on a table or a counter. By the way, guys, if you wanna learn more about all these products, I'll put a link down in the video description below. But yeah, this one's simple, cheap, and does the job. Now let's go ahead and take a look at some controllers and we're gonna start with some from 8-Bit Doe, very popular third-party controller maker for the Switch. A lot of people love these, they're very versatile uh, and for the most part, they're really well made. And so I have three of them from 8-Bit Doe to check out. And so this first one here is the N30 Pro 2 Bluetooth Game Pad. And as you can see, it is very retro styled. I like this one because it is a little bit bigger and so it fits in my hands really well. Plus I like the, the dual analog thumbsticks at the bottom there, even though they are a little on the small side, but they have a nice firmness to them. They're not kind of floppy, if you know what I'm talking about. I know that kind of sounds weird, but trust me on this. They are, they, they just recentered themselves very well. And so you see me playing uh, Strikers 1945 here, which is a shoot 'em up. And again, normally you would try to play this maybe with the D-pad, but I feel like the directional thumbstick works really well here. And not every controller can say that. And here's the 8-Bit Doe SN30 Bluetooth gamepad. And obviously this is tailored to look like a Super Nintendo controller. It feels very much like that, but again, it's wireless. This is slightly thicker than the previous one, but it's not super heavy or anything like that. Uh, feels very comfortable like a Super Nintendo controller would. Obviously it doesn't have any thumbsticks, so this is going to be a very retro feeling controller if that's what you're looking for. But then here's where 8-Bit Doe takes that Super Nintendo style and adds the Pro to it. And as you can see here, it has two analog thumbsticks. There are two bumpers and there are two triggers. Plus it also has the home button as well as the snapshot button right there. So again, very well designed for the Switch. And so this one I feel like is really well designed for a bunch of different types of players as well as types of games because you can go back and forth between the D-pad and the thumbsticks. And for the most part, 8-Bit Doe has a reputation for making quality controllers with low latency, but if there are issues that can be solved with a firmware update, you can get that. And I actually updated all of mine just to be sure. And yeah, it's a very easy process. Now let's check out something a little bit different. This is the RetroBit Sega Saturn 8-button arcade pad. Now this one is not Bluetooth, so unlike the others, you can't just turn it on and have the switch detect it. In this case, you have a little USB dongle that you need to insert into the switch dock. And then once you do that, then your switch will detect it. Now there's really two advantages of having a 2.4 gigahertz wireless controller over a standard Bluetooth one. The first one being is that there's no pairing involved. It's instant because it comes paired from the factory to that dongle. And the second benefit and probably the most significant is that you don't really have any lag when it comes to using 2.4 gigahertz over Bluetooth. So uh, if you're hardcore and you want the absolute best experience, that's what you choose. And here I am using the Saturn controller playing a Saturn remake. This of course is Panzer Dragoon on the Switch. And yeah, it feels great. Now let's take a look at these D-pad controllers by the company Hori. These are officially licensed by Nintendo and immediately you can tell that they are quality. And as you can see, I have three of them here. There is the Super Mario one, the Pokemon, and also Zelda Breath of the Wild. And basically these are replacements for the left Joy-Con. So instead of having to use those four directional buttons, you have a proper D-pad, like it should have always been, Nintendo. And it does feel really good, especially playing old school platforming games like this. However, these are not perfect because they only work in handheld mode. There is no battery, there's no motion sensing in there, uh, there's no vibration built into it. It's simply just to give you a D-pad when you want it. And so that's definitely disappointing because I think a lot of people like me would just permanently swap them out if it actually had all the functionality of a normal Joy-Con. I also think it'd be really cool if they created the right Joy-Con, you know, just to match. It is really weird that you have the Zelda theme or the Super Mario themed one plugged in on the left side, but then it doesn't match on the right. So I don't know, it's a, it's a small thing, but if you're playing in handheld mode anyways, that would be cool. All right, guys, let's well, a quick look at some Nintendo Switch accessories I've been messing around with over the last couple weeks and months. 
but the Nintendo Switch is so popular and there are so many solutions out there, especially third-party solutions. I would love to know down in the comments what docks you are using, what third-party controllers you recommend, and so much more. Let's all share information down in the comments below. All right, guys, thank you very much for watching. Thank you for subscribing and take care.